Good morning. Welcome to Grace and Truth for today. This is your host, Pastor Pete, and thanks again for tuning in uh, here on Thursday, November the 12th. Uh, we're looking in Genesis chapter 46, and I'm going to begin reading in verse number 29. And of course, Jacob and all of his family have made their way into Egypt to live out the rest of Jacob's life and the rest of their lives uh, in this new land. And of course, uh, their brother, their son, uh, Joseph, is now the second in command and has opened up uh, opportunities for them that would not have been available to them otherwise. And so Jacob is making his way to Egypt to see his son for the first time in many, many years. And the Bible says in verse number 29, And Joseph made ready his chariot, and went up to meet Israel, or Jacob his father, to Goshen, and presented himself unto him. And he fell on his neck, and wept on his neck a good while. And Israel, or Jacob, said unto Joseph, now let me die, since I have seen thy face, because thou art yet alive. I want to ask the question today, what are you living for? What are you living for? It, it would seem that after seeing his son, that he assumed was dead for many years, Jacob admitted that he could now die knowing that his boy was alive and his family was whole. You know, all those years Jacob lived not knowing what had happened to Joseph, but assuming that he was dead. You remember the story. You remember that his boys brought the coat of many colors back to him. Of course, they had dipped it in blood to make it look as though a wild animal had gotten to Joseph. And, and Jacob said that a wild beast has, de has devoured my son. However, the uncertainty and the lack of closure, because he never actually saw Joseph's dead body, um, perhaps maybe he thought, well, maybe he, maybe he did some damage to Joseph, this wild beast, and tore off his coat of many colors, but may, maybe Joseph was resilient enough to get away. And so because there was, there was no closure, because he never saw the, the body itself, he perhaps maybe clung to just a little bit of hope. Maybe the door of hope was left open just a tiny bit. And so Jacob, it seems, was living for something. You know, we're all living for something, aren't we? something that perhaps uh, we deem to be an absolute impossibility, but you know, we're hoping beyond hope that, uh, that somehow, some way, we'll be able to acquire or attain whatever it is that we're living for. What was, what was Jacob living for? Jacob was living, it seems, to see Joseph again. You know, he doubted he ever would, but he certainly clung to the slim chance that he might. I think to myself each day that perhaps Jacob pressed on with a body that was failing, a body that was aging, the aches and pains that we all experience, but without some of the modern comforts and conveniences we have. And Jacob rose up every morning and emerged from his tent, thinking that perhaps today would be the day that maybe I get a, a message from Joseph. Uh, perhaps today's the day in which I uh, get a message from someone else telling me that Joseph is alive. Or perhaps maybe even today's the day in which a young man comes up over that horizon that looks familiar, and it's, it's Joseph. And so he clung to that hope. He was living for that. And when, when that day finally came, he said, okay, now I can die. Because I, I really don't have anything else to live for. That which I was living for has been accomplished. He was living to see Joseph again. I think, I think maybe he was living to see his family unified again. You know, he had to know that prior to Joseph's departure, the dynamics of his family were not healthy. And no doubt he longed for the day that they were not only together in the same place, uh, dwelling in the same area, but also they were at peace with one another. We see evidence of that in Genesis chapter number 50 when uh, Joseph's um, father died. Jacob had died and the messenger sent a message to Joseph in verse number 16 of Genesis 50 saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall he say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sin, for they did unto the evil. And now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of thy father. So there, there seems to be, whether that was actually a message he gave or whether they, they conjured that up, there seems to be an element in which perhaps Jacob was living, not only to see his family or see Joseph again, but to see his family whole again. You know, perhaps you are living for something similar. Uh, what I mean by that is it, uh, it's something that's a dream. Perhaps it's an impossible hope that likely will never happen. You know, I think we learn from Jacob's story that 
with God, really nothing is impossible. We see that in other places in the Bible, but certainly that's played out here. But can I tell you that my recommendation would be to live not for what God can do, some impossible, crazy, miraculous event, but instead live for God himself. For he never fails, he never disappoints, he never forsakes. You know, we aren't guaranteed anything in life beyond the faithfulness of God. And so my recommendation to you is you consider what is it that I'm living for. Jacob was living to see Joseph again. He was living to see his family unified. And when that day happened, he said, okay, now I can die. I can depart in peace. But my recommendation to you would be not to live for a thing, some impossible hope or some impossible dream, but live for the, for the God who can make that thing happen. And don't live for him just because he can make it happen, but live for him because he's faithful, because he's good, because he never disappoints and he never forsakes us. Father, would you, uh, Lord, to bless this simple thought from your word and help us as we go about our day. Uh, Lord, help us to live for that which is eternal as opposed for that which is temporal. Uh, Lord, may we resist the natural urgencies and the natural instincts of our own hearts and our own lives that want to live for things, for possessions, even for, even for people. And may we live, uh, Lord, for truth and for righteousness and for you. Now give us a great day today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thanks again for tuning in for great, to Grace and Truth for today. Hope it's been a blessing to you. If it has been, let me encourage you to share it with someone else. Uh, God bless you. Have a great day. Great weekend. Make sure you're in church this coming Sunday. Be faithful to God's house. God bless.